Today's Take 5 with the Saints May the 9th is Maria Gabriela Saketu. Maria Gabriela, as was her given name once she took orders as a Trappist nun in her life, lived to be only 25 years old. A young woman born in Sardinia, native of Sardinia, very proud of her ethnic heritage as a Sardinian, but one who ultimately expressed in her short but very powerful life of faith as a Trappist nun the belief that all shall be one in Jesus Christ. In other words, she was one of the great voices, forerunner voices, I should say, of ecumenism, the belief that all Christians should ultimately come together and express the same devotion and commitment to Jesus Christ. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But for for a long time in the church's life, it has failed to do so. And it has honored people who have made legitimate efforts and abilities to be able to bring people of different branches of Christianity together. Maria Gabriella is one such person. Now, she is a local commemoration not found in any of our calendars, but I think she is a wonderful addition to this calendar. As such, we don't have a re scripture reading for her, so I can tell you a little bit more about her. She was born in Dorgali, Sardinia in 1914, born to a family of shepherds, the fifth of eight children to her parents, Mark Antonio Segetu and Katerina Kuka. Many of her family died in 1919, and a couple of her brothers a year later from various diseases, her father and three brothers included in that. So being raised by her mother, who had her hands full, to, to be quite blunt, she was known as a child who was obstinate and obedient at the same time. She was known to speak her mind, but ultimately she paid great respect and homage to her mother and to those who had authority over her. These became very important traits because as she went to formal school later in life, she expressed these same, same traits. One who would ask questions and even argue if she thought that her point was correct, but one who ultimately paid great respect to her teachers and those who were over her in her faith. The death of her little sister, Giovanna, in 1932 created sort of a crisis of faith for her in the sense that as a young woman of about that age, around 18, she decided that there was something more for her in life than simply being a shepherd and going to school. She began to have these dreams in which she felt herself called into a deeper life of faith in the Catholic Church. And as such, she enrolled in an organization called Azione Cattolica, which was essentially a lay order of Catholic education that was part of Italy, and from my understanding, is still something that is part of the Catholic Church in Italy today. As part of her learning, she was also given the task of being able to be instructors to local children and teenagers in the faith. As such, she began to teach catechism. And a story about her was that when she first started teaching catechism, you know, the stereotypes of nuns with rulers in their hand today, well, she wasn't a nun yet, but she was known to carry a stick in her hand. But the local priest who was supervising her one day came to her, took the stick, and replaced it with a note that he put in her hand which said, Arm yourself with patience, not a stick. And Segedu from that point accepted that criticism and began to alter her methods to be more patient and display more kindness and humility toward her students. There was a priest that became her mentor named Father Maloney who encouraged her to enter the religious life, much to the chagrin of some of her family. Her mother actually supported it, but was upset that she wasn't told ahead of time that her daughter was joining an order. One of her brothers believed that her entering the convent would bring shame upon the family because of her past behavior. But however, on September 30th, 1935, she entered the Trappist convent convent in Grotteferrata, which is outside of Rome, where she was officially given the religious name Maria Gabriella, given her habit in 1936 and making her final vows on the feast day of Christ the King, October 31st, 1937. The abbess of the convent was a lady named Mother Maria Pia Gulini, who also exhibited an enthusiasm for ecumenism. 
And as such, she offered herself during the week of Christian unification, being Maria Gabriella, that is, in 1938, offered herself what is known as the spiritual sacrifice for the unification of the Christian church, which meant, in other words, she showed up and offered herself as part of a ceremony and ritual of offering people who came up and said, my life will be dedicated to the work of bringing Christians together, which for the Catholic Church, particularly in that day and age, was a fairly big step for someone to be able to profess that. Unfortunately, very soon after that, she fell ill with a diagnosis of tuberculosis and succumbed to it 15 months later, passing away at the age of 25 on April 23, 1939. But what was discovered during that time and after her death in particular was that she kept flipping very frequently to two chapters in John. John chapter 10 and John chapter 17. In particular, John 17, which remarks that there will be one flock, one shepherd on a couple of occasions. John 10 also says the same thing in the parable of the good shepherd where Jesus also again says there will be one flock and one shepherd. It was noted that her Bible was yellow in those two sections from the fact that she clearly was flipping back and forth and what was discovered that in her teaching, both to her fellow sisters and to those that were students under her in the classroom, she was frequently talking about the role of Christians to come together and to profess one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, while she did not have a direct influence, mainly because of the relatively short duration of her life, her words and her courage in promoting ecumenism in that short time helped to inspire some of her own students as well as other sisters in her order to begin a movement within the Catholic Church to help to bridge the gap between particularly similar churches, Anglican and Lutheran and those, and also to even build bridges toward the Orthodox Church, which there have been a formal separation between the East and the West now for over a thousand years because of questions over authority and a few other mm, fairly significant theological quibbles. But it is a day to remember a young woman who in her passion for faith, in her ability to ask questions, but also to obey the teaching that was received to her and to expound greatly upon the common heritage that we all share in Jesus Christ. Today, Maria Gabriela Sagedu is one that we remember and give thanks for, for her tireless work in her short life of offering the keys to the kingdom of God to all people who profess faith in that one Lord, Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our next Saint of the Day. Take care.